And who are you with, Denise? UIC. We're talking about students and startups and tapping into this, the student talent pool. Let's go student talent pool. Here you go. <laughs> Let's give her a big round of applause and make me feel less awkward. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so um, my name is Denise Ching and uh, I'm here uh, from UIC. I work in the Institute for Entrepreneurial Studies and I run our Small Business Development Center. Uh, so Small Business Development Centers, we are actually all throughout the nation and throughout the state of Illinois and we help people who are starting businesses and people who are already in business uh, grow and take advantage of opportunities. And uh, one of the great things about being at UIC is we have a huge talent pool of, of students and faculty and staff who are um, eager, motivated, and looking to either start their own business or join an existing business. And so what I wanted to talk about today was uh, what we've done in the past to kind of help collaborate with uh, local businesses and what we're kind of go going to do uh, going forward to help uh, make that even more successful. So one of the things I just wanted to, to bring up is that, you know, when somebody goes to school, right, how many people have gone to school, have gone to college? A lot of people, right, yeah. I'm getting my master's now, so I obviously love it. But, you know, you go to school because you want something better for your life, right? You, you want to learn something, you want a better job, you want a better opportunity, you want to go somewhere. Um, and when you create your own business, you know, when you have a startup, it's because you want something better, right? You want a better job for yourself. You want to create a better experience. You want to create a better product. You see an opportunity to make a difference. And so they're really kind of the same thing, right? You're, you're going to school to create something better and to improve yourself so that you can make an impact, uh, a positive impact on the world. And you're creating a business so that you can also have an impact on the world. Uh, but these two things, you know, businesses and schools don't always mix and they don't always mix in a right way, you know? We have lots of businesses who say they can't get the right talent, you know? These people aren't the right people, you know, they're, they're, they don't work the way I want them to work or they don't have uh, the skills that I want them to have. Um, and, you know, so the schools aren't really doing their job in order and to teach them the things that they need to know, you know, it's not relevant. And then people are also in school and, I, you know, I don't know about you, but you know, a lot of the stuff I learned was when I got out of school and actually joined the workforce. I mean, you, you learn enough in school to kind of get by, but it's not always relevant. Like you don't really understand uh, what you're learning, how to apply it. You know, there's different levels of knowledge. There's, you know, you have a, a basic understanding of something, but then you can learn how to apply it, and then you can learn how to manipulate it and how to evaluate it. And so there's this, these levels, it's actually called Bloom's Taxonomy, of the, the levels of knowledge that you can have. And so one of the things that, that we do in our office is we help try to make that bridge between what you learn in theory and in a classroom and in a textbook and what it's really like in real life, you know, because what happens in a textbook is not what happens in real life, right? <laughs> so um, I really wanted to bring up, there's kind of like three ways uh, to interact with universities and students if you are um, an entrepreneur um, or if you're a business owner or you're a business professional uh, and you're looking to uh, learn from uh, the research and uh, the new things that are coming out of universities as well as um, get new employees or get new partners uh, to, to join your business or get some of that talent. Um, and the first way, and it's probably the most common way that people know about is, is through internships, right? Um, internships would be, you know, different than uh, having somebody be a full-time employee as you have them for a short period of time and you have them work on a very specific type of project. Um, now, one of the, the challenges with internships is that you have to have a really uh, well-organized, defined uh, job for them. Um, and, and that's usually where the challenge comes in, especially if you are a new and emerging business, is that things are moving so quickly and so rapidly and things are changing all the time that it can be difficult to like document what they should actually be doing. And from a student perspective, they can come in with a little bit of apprehension and hesitancy. Um, so that's one of the things that we've seen um, in our office when we have, uh, have interns is that they don't always there's a, um, a lack of confidence sometimes to, to ask 
uh, questions or really put things out there. They're kind of waiting um, in the back for you to direct them. And so um, if you are going to do in interns, I would say uh, one of the best things that you could do is, is have something that's a really interesting project for them uh, because that will naturally start to bring out uh, their curiosity instead of uh, having a more like administrative or uh, like usually what we get is we want somebody to like do our website or our social media. <laughs> um, you know, there are more things that students can do than that, but have an interesting uh, job for them, but give them some context of why the job that you're giving them is important for your company uh, so that they get a more uh, holistic view of their project and what they're doing. Uh, so for example, we have a student who's interning with a, a, a company right now and they're going through a database, right? It's like typical intern uh, work. You know, go through our database of 5,000 contacts, update them, make sure all the contact information is right, start filling out areas that are blank so that we can now put them onto an email list and social media blast and that sort of thing. And it's tedious work. It's perfect for an intern, that manual, you know, time-consuming, tedious work. Um, but what you have to do in order to make that meaningful for uh, the student is for them to understand why that this is important, why this is important to your, to your company, why this type of work is important for them to know, uh, so they have a context for the type of work that they're doing. Um, and then you also include them in with other things that are going on, and they're not just kind of like left alone, um, you know, at their desk to do that one little job. So. Internships are a great way to uh, start to tap into the student talent pool because you get them for a short period of time. Uh, you do have to pay them. Uh, we At UIC, we don't do unpaid internships, uh, but uh, you can give them those very um, maybe time-intensive projects, but give it a context of why that project is important for your company. And those usually go through our um, you know, career services uh, departments uh, within within UIC, uh, but my favorite way uh, to really interact with students is through projects. So if you didn't know this, there's lots of college classes that are consulting based or project based, and this is to me the best way to start to get to know students and tap into the student pool because it's free uh, because the students are getting college credit for it. It's for a class where they have to learn how to interact with a real business on real problems that that business is facing, and they have to apply the, the, no the knowledge that they're getting in their other classes to a real world situation. You know, something that more and more classes are doing on the elementary level, it's called, you know, problem-based learning. It's the same thing on the college level because, you know, when you take a, a, a data science class, you know, all your data is clean, right? You get the samples, you run your stats, you figure out, you know, all of the metrics, but in the real world, you don't get clean data. And so you have to learn, well, how do I work with this? What do I do? And so doing a project with a university, uh, you uh, get the benefit of having a, usually a team of students, so you, you get anywhere from three to five students working on this problem or this opportunity in your business, and they, in exchange, get a really good hands-on experience of what it's like to apply their knowledge in a real-world situation. So we do projects all the time out of our office. Uh, they're anywhere from 16 to eight weeks, and we do things like um, a systems analysis. So we had a company that did um, after school uh, like sports programs and they had grown really rapidly but yet their technology and infrastructure had not grown with the size of their business activity and so they were finding they were having a lot of difficulty communicating in the field because they had coaches and they had um, schools and they had students who were signed up for these sports activities and they had a staff that was, you know, constantly going back and forth between the office and the field with like email and schedules and phone messages. And so we had our um, our information systems uh, analysis class do a communication infrastructure uh, analysis for them and come up with solutions to tell them, well, here's the best way for you to have um, a schedule as well as like calls. And so if somebody calls off or if you need like a sub at a school uh, to run your program, how you could quickly communicate uh, within your, your company that would be efficient and allow you to have a better productivity. Um, so those are the types of projects that like a small business, I think they have about 20 employees could really tap into and get really good, high quality talent uh, to come up with a solution for them. And it's all for free. 
Uh, and so, uh, again, because they're getting college credit for it, um, there's, there's no fees involved with that. And I know that there are, you know, other schools do this as well. So um, if you could, uh, if, you, if you do have a business and you are looking at like expanding into a new market or uh, looking at a product line or you're trying to uh, systematize a, um, uh, a, a process, uh, we have things like that uh, where we would love to have our students uh, get a look at your business, apply their knowledge, and come up with a solution for you. Um, and uh, the other thing that I think is really, really helpful where you can um, learn about what's going on at the universities as well as um, how the students are, are really trying to look at the world and apply um, their knowledge and their perspective to the world is, is to come to the competition. So every university does a business competition or they'll do an invention competition or we also have through our engineering school, we have a senior design expo. Um, all of the colleges and universities will do some type of exhibition or competition uh, where you have students for like a capstone project or for um, another class or even as an extracurricular put forth their ideas of how they're going to solve, you know, real world problems. And that's another way to really see like what students um, have, what type of ideas, how they're coming about, the solutions to those, what they've built so far, where they're looking to take it. And um, you can get involved uh, a number of ways. You can just actually just come and see and, and watch the presentations. Uh, you can also get involved through mentoring. Uh, we, we love to try to pair um, student teams with mentors who can give them uh, context to their ideas uh, so that they have, um, you know, a more robust way of looking at their, their solution. And so um, coming to competitions, and they're usually in the spring, uh, but they do happen throughout the year, but primarily they're in the spring, is another way to see, like, cutting-edge science that's coming out of the universities, what students are... Um, you know, highly motivated as well as highly driven to, to build um, the newest things. And it's a great way to start to network with them and pull them in, pull them in either into your company, uh, pull them in as uh, a mentee, uh, or, or uh, look at them as maybe a, a future uh, company that you would want to support. So um, I don't have like a whole lot of other like very specific advice, except that, you know, where we look at in our office, um, you know, with, within the university, it's, there are, um, there's, there's Office of Technology Management where we really look at, uh, you know, tech transfer, and that's where you have, you know, professors and PhD students who are doing cutting edge research. Uh, they're uh, protecting those uh, research ideas with patents, and then those patents are licensed uh, to existing companies, or they are um, being, um, you know, hopefully developed into maybe a, a company that can be spun out of the university. Those certainly happen, um, but we really look at, like, our tech transfer is the pair of shoes. You know, we're really here to work as a service provider, uh, giving our students the opportunities uh, to interact with real uh, businesses so that they can take the knowledge that they're learning in the classroom, the knowledge that they've had through their, through their life and their life experience, and apply that to the local businesses um, around Chicago and the Chicagoland area. So um, with that, I know that's like not a whole 20 minutes, but I really did want to kind of open it up to some questions. I don't know if anybody's ever tried to contact a university. It's really difficult. Um, we're like impenetrable wall. Like you, you know. Like first of all, you don't even know who to contact. Then if you find somebody to contact, you probably won't hear back from them. Um, so you know, with that, I feel like as a university uh, staff, you know, that's one way that we could be a lot better in terms of our interaction with the community. Is we do need to be more involved with the community and not in our little ivory tower, right? So. But usually how I meet people, so part of my job is to be out in the community, but a lot of faculty, I would say if you wanted to start to uh, interact with uh, people within your university, um, start seeking out faculty. Some faculty are open to that and are willing to network and want to reach out to the community and some don't. And, you know, and it's kind of like entrepreneurship. You know, you find somebody that you can work with and if you find someone you can't, you just move on. You just keep moving on until you find someone that you can work with. And, um, and I think you'll be surprised at, at how open 
a lot of the faculty are working with, um, with local businesses and local entrepreneurs uh, to bring that real life, real world experience to their classroom. You know, education, I think everybody kind of knows this, it's, it's being disrupted right now. It's a really exciting time. You know, people are really questioning, like, do I really need to go to college? You know, you have MOOCs that are, you know, very, very popular and growing and trying to figure out what that model is. And you have, you know, children, like my two-year-old knows Chrome more than she knows anything else, you know, because that's how she gets to YouTube to watch Baba Sheep. So, <laughs> you know, Children can look up, and people can look up anything. You know, any information is really at our fingertip, right? But what we but what we need to know is the context. Why is that important? How is this going to make a difference? What what goes into making this work? And then working together with people, like how do I work? How do you work? How do we work together? And so that's a new thing that we're going to be bringing in with our students. Um, we're going to be uh, reactivating our um, collegiate entrepreneurship organization this fall. And part of uh, being a part of the organization is we're uh, partnering with Gallup, which has just launched uh, an entrepreneurial uh, strength finder test. And so we're going to have all of our students take this assessment, uh, which will rank their eight, their top 10 skills that are needed to be an entrepreneur, like business focus, creative thinking, relationship builder, uh, determination, uh, promoter, delegator, a risk taker, and so they'll be able to see where they fall on this range of talents and whether they're dominant or supporting or are contributing. And that way, through a collaborative environment of working on projects and doing a competition and uh, getting some internships and interacting in a student organization, they're going to start to network and they're going to be able to see people who have similar talents and kind of start to build up that pool. And if they come into your company as uh, a, a project or as an intern, um, they will have a better understanding of who they are and who their ta what their talents are and what their strengths are so that they can then be a really effective contributing member of, of that team because that's, that's part of what you need to know. You need to know what you're good at, what you're not good at, where your strengths are, where your strengths are not at, what you like, what you don't like. And you can only find that by doing it. You know, you can only imagine for so long until you go in and you do it and say, oh, this is what it's really like. I really don't like sales, you know, or, oh, this is what, you know, process engineering really is. I love it. It's amazing. You know, and so that's what we're trying to do is to give those opportunities to the students so that they can move from a decision from, yes, this is something absolutely for me, or no, this is something that is not for me. And the safest way to do that for them without having it to be like a hardcore job and trying to apply for a job and, you know, all of the, you know, stress that goes into, you know, interviewing and, and getting um, hired is that they get their feet wet through projects, they get their feet wet through internships, they get their feet wet through, uh, you know, collaborating on a team to compete in a competition. And so um, what I'd like to do is just kind of open it up for some questions. Has anybody ever tried to, like, hire an intern or, or do a project with a university? Or was that ever something that you thought about in terms of uh, tapping into the talent or, or not? I tried. You tried? Anyone? Yeah. There you go. See? Yeah. Yeah, we're horrible like that. You know, it's really bad. It's really bad. And I'm sorry you had that experience. But yeah, but you still got somebody, right? Yeah, good. And I love your boots. Oh my God, you have the best boots. <laughs> So yeah, just, just short and sweet. I just, you know, do a little plug. Our booth is over there. So I, you know, we are taking, we're looking to do 20 projects this fall um, with our Masters of Information um, Sciences and our MBA classes. So um, if you are interested in having um, a team of students, they work about, you know, 15 to 20 hours a week on your project. Um, and those projects will start in August. So uh, we are looking to take 20 teams this, this fall. So. Um, Anybody who's interested in, in working with some students that way, um, or if you are interested in, in maybe mentoring some student teams, uh, I would love to talk to you. Um, we've got our sign-up sheet, and we're literally like right outside of the stage here. So hopefully I'll be able to talk to you um, at some point. Um, I would love to work with you guys. So thanks a lot. Bye.